Hi, George. Uh, let me just get the uh, things ready. Uh, I'll be in a minute. Cool. Okay, I think we can uh, get started. Um, let me share my screen. There we go. Uh, all right, so yeah, welcome to uh, 8th of June, 2023, RSVCX community call. This is our antitrust policy notice by Hyperledger. Okay, and let's dive into our agenda. Uh, but before we get there, I would like to actually uh, just uh, think about the agenda out, uh, like out loud. I might have missed something. Um, we have a, a touchdown on the mentorship. Um, we have the usual stuff. Um, and uh, just a second. Um, yeah, and uh, I think we need to actually add some 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 points there. Uh, I saw George that you created some issue and you also uh, like uh, messaging me about the, you would like to discuss uh, some stuff about uh, Aries agent is harnessed, right? So we can put that on agenda. Um, Cool. Yeah, anyways, good. Even if it's saved till the end of the meeting. Never mind. Okay, maybe let's do that. I think uh, perhaps the the the, the typical uh, the chore agenda will be relatively fast, I think. So we can put it here as discussion points. So um so that would be ATH and then and then you had issue about the uh, decorator. Mm. Message handling. Okay, and I think so. It is for now. We are already busy enough. Um. Well, maybe that um 
that CLI app idea as well. Oh so yeah, that's right. And CLI, yeah, lots of lots of stuff to cover. Good, good. That's what these meetings are for. So uh, yeah, let's let's get started. So, um, a uh, mentorship program. So uh, uh, probably the applicants are already aware. Uh, we have chosen. Uh, Cho chosen the mentee. So if you haven't been uh, contacted by us and by Linux Foundation um, about being selected, uh, probably you got already a uh, other message saying the otherwise. Uh, uh, nevertheless, there was uh, really lots of competition. So please don't feel don't feel bad and don't get discouraged if you haven't been selected. I uh, just uh, the competition was tough. There was lots of people applying for a lot more than we uh, expected, uh, and it it took some time to to go through all the applicants. But nevertheless, uh, this is now concluded. So, um, um, congrats to selected mentees, and uh, I hope best of best of luck to the ones which uh, haven't. Uh, but also I want to know that uh, not being selected as, as a mentee, uh, you know, does, doesn't doesn't uh, mean you can't uh, work with us and join these calls and and uh, contribute as uh, it's open source and everyone and, 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 and anyone can make a dent and, and contribution. So, uh, so yeah, heads up and cheers. Uh, let's get to our uh the chore portion of the agenda so uh basically we had a bunch of a bunch of prs in relation to uh to ddo uh oh and actually i just just noticed uh that uh, we have uh two uh two additional um members on today actually three on, on today's call uh so so welcome um we'll have a space for like some free discussion at the end if you would like to uh but maybe i would uh, i i i would if, if you don't mind Miro, uh you can kind of give an update on like what's actually happening with uh you know the the, the integration uh, like you you started working on and uh, what kind of PRs that led you to make if you'd like to comment on it sure <clears throat> i can i can pretend that my memory lasts beyond one week <laughs> uh, so um, we i or i have tried to <clears throat> integrate the uh, new uh, doc related crates into Aries VCX and run into multiple issues. Um, one of them was, for example, that the current dit parser uh, rejects any non qualified dits. So uh, we should type dits whenever we use them, uh, as currently we are using strings. And uh, we should distinguish qualified and unqualified dates uh, based uh, based on context uh, we might want or based on context uh, dates, um, the 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 their method can be can be either inferred or not. So in cases uh, where it can't, it the dates should be qualified, and we are. Throughout the code base, currently using unqualified dates. Um, another another issue is that uh, the date doc uh, crate is based uh, heavily on the actual uh, latest did core uh, spec, and uh, um, the for example, the services fields, uh, which or, or the uh, service format that is used in connection currently is a type which is 
not part of the dates of spec, for example. So it's not entirely com com compli uh, com uh, compliant to the specs. Um, and this, this means that uh, except for like using using uh, this in the agent type, it also uh, as you as you mentioned, I think the uh, the public key uh, public key field is not a valid uh, did uh, did doc did doc field. So there are like multiple discrepancies between the format that we use currently in, in connection protocol and in the new implementation, uh, which means that uh, it would be very, well, Well, I'm, I'm, I'm like what I'm saying that, that there are like multiple, multiple hurdles. Another thing is that, um, another thing is that, uh, for example, the uh, current the doc that doesn't implement uh, this, the key referencing of uh, key key references, um, uh, but the current implementation does. And this is a uh, kind of basic functionality that we should support. It's used quite widely. And yeah, I think uh, that that's mostly it, right? And then uh, basically you, you created this uh, 864 PR uh, and kind of found and actually uh, richly described uh, all these issues in the PR description. And then, uh, and then, still we, we couldn't merge it because of some issues. But uh, uh, some of the useful stuff could have been cherry picked, and that that's pretty much what we did here in this uh, in this variety of smaller PRs related to to the, the dog. Yeah, that that was just some kind of minor improvements that I. Uh had to make when I was uh, doing the integration. Mm -hmm. So I guess uh, once we actually uh, go ahead with the integration, uh, ha having these things uh, off the table and done uh, will make things easier. But uh, yeah, I'll just add here uh, now, uh, additionally to what Mira said, um, that uh, basically we also found that uh, other implementations like AFJ or Akapai, they uh, they also, uh, you know, they support this kind of legacy um, uh, the legacy aspects uh, like the public key, which is not included in the core, but they do support this. Yeah, they do support this legacy format for a connection protocol, and that's the protocol, you know, connection protocol we implement currently. And so it doesn't probably is worth the effort trying to upgrade uh, our our existing connection protocol implementation to use the the new uh, diddoc create which is W3C compliant, but rather just kind of leave it as is uh, the connection protocol, and then uh, go ahead and rather implement a did exchange uh, a protocol which supersedes. Uh, Connection protocol and use the new uh, did doc create, which is W3C compliant uh, there. But uh, yeah, I guess uh, it would be handy if we, if uh, before that we also implement this missing feature in did doc create, the, the referencing of keys, uh, which is uh, generally used and we, we support it right now in our legacy. Uh, 
the doc uh, implementation. So we would like to preserve preserve that capability going forward with uh, the exchange as well. Yeah, uh, I think we it, it could be uh, like we, we can adjust the new implementation to remain uh, fully backwards compatible, but might be um, kind of unnecessary work perhaps. Hmm. Mm. Right, yeah, so so we'll see, but I guess uh, and we wouldn't want to invest heavily on connection protocol, some sort of like improvements or investigation since the exchange is kind of like um, obvious uh, descendant and, uh, and uh, <coughs> I think that's actually pretty much uh, all the all the implementation these days. Uh, they already support the exchange, so uh, let's just rather roll forward. Uh, yeah, so these are like some improvements. PR uh, those are all merged, I think, at this point. Um, uh, then there was this additional PR uh, about uh, refactoring of profile abstraction we had uh it's just sign minor technicality uh but connecting to that uh one of the tasks one of the tasks which is in progress right now is actually removing this profile abstraction from aries vcx uh you know main code base and uh especially using it in like method signatures as arguments so just uh, just a recap for uh, for listeners and those who might not be familiar, a profile uh, in Aries VCX uh, code base uh, was kind of a basket of uh, objects having uh, uh, certain APIs, lower level APIs. So for example, there was uh, APIs. Uh, to read uh, read data from the ledger, write data to the ledger, to work with uh, credentials, to like to like cre create them, store them, and whatnot, and uh, yeah, stuff like this. And and uh, this basically forces. Uh, I'll I'll jump into that PR into the relevant PR. Uh, it's this this one. Um, this has like a bunch of disadvantages as we are passing these profiles across uh, like uh, across Aries VCX functions. Basically, sometimes the function needed a one component of the entire profile, but because the function required you know the whole profile, um, you kind of had to construct everything that the profile required you to. To contain, whereas in fact you the, the the relevant function really just required a small component. So this was, you you ended up passing a bunch of references to objects which would never be really used uh, um, down the, down the road. Uh, and this PR yeah, this PR is. Um, is now in progress. Uh, it's mostly, I think, it's it's close to completion. Although I have failing tests here. Um, did you did you find there were many methods that got um, like super ugly with the amount of injections that it needs, or are yeah. they all sort of relatively small with what's required? To be injected. I think it's uh, not terrible. I think uh, like usually it's one. Yeah, usually you know there's not so many functions in Aries VCX which really require like all components. Usually, typically it requires like unknown creds and maybe uh, reading the ledger or writing the ledger or some combination. But usually it's not more than two components those Aries VCX function require. And now we can just browse through some random examples here. Yeah, oftentimes, for example, he, here was a profile, but actually you only needed the wallet from it. Mm. Or uh, I don't know, is there some bigger one? So here's an example of a bigger one. This was for sending uh, 
uh, holder sending credential request, I suppose. Um, required profile. Now it's two components from it. It's the unknown creds and the ledger read. But actually, uh, uh, as, as, as we kind of touched, like mentioned before, we still want to actually break down these unknown creds like into smaller components by role. So I imagine that in the future, it's going to be like, uh, you know, in, inject uh, unknown creds ledger read and then in, inject unknown creds holder or something like that so it will be even more kind of co compartmentalized uh, divided into more more components cool awesome yeah that's good yeah um and so that was in the aries vcx agent we were just looking at um so I guess the agent and tests will keep using profiles for convenience, but um, that's just sort of for the convenience of the agent and for tests. Yeah, yeah. So just to quickly uh, show that, uh, change remove profiles. Um, basically, basically, if I do search in Aries VCX for... Uh, a DIN profile as a trade object we used to have, it's only in the dev setup. That's cool. the yeah. place. But nice. uh, it is still used in like yeah, agents, you know, it's widely used here. Also for the tests in Aries VCX. So if I look here, uh, there's profiles here and there are, there's only a few occurrences here because that's just declaration of the 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 trade object but uh, they have many uses right now i mean these profiles are used all across the place yeah so and no, I, I guess i would keep the pro i was thinking of picking out the profiles into separate crate but i guess they can just sit in aries vcx for now as a kind of a side component a useful convenient helper tool for other projects integrating yeah i guess it's it's helpful for projects where they know that they want everything right they want all the components of a profile otherwise you better yeah yeah exactly or actually what i found like since we are talking about this uh one more thing i have in progress the, the reason why i even started like doing this is that i wanted to use the modular 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 lips profile in lib vcx and you know vcx uh, uh, uh node.js wrapper the problem is that the modular lips profile and the existing currently used in the vdr uh, vdr tools profile their constructions are is quite different because you cannot really build the vdr tools profile incrementally like it's either you build, you either like initialize wallet and pool at once or nothing. But that doesn't really place like so well with the with the Node.js wrapper. And it's just like they have this different approach. So it's like uh, I, I wanted to have like more control over how we manage memory and global state in in the like libvcx portion of the code but because aries vcx itself forced me to use profiles which are somewhat opinionated and opinionated it was like difficult to modify you know and even just to mm -hmm. think about it so this was kind of prelim preliminary work to like remove that dependency on profiles from from aries vcx and then uh, I would like to actually tweak the profiles or maybe create new kind of a profile trait, which would enable kind of incremental building. So you could initialize wallet first, then additionally you could initialize, you know, pool, unknown credit, and whatever, whatever you need, but to kind of get a more control about the order of the initialization. Yep. Yeah, cool. Awesome. Makes sense. 
Uh, okay, I'll uh, just leave a note here. So uh, this is like um, soon for review. And then we have like just just kind of thinking we'll continue with incremental profiles, I guess. Incremental profile in a media operation. Right. Uh, upcoming work. Uh, I'll put it here. And also, as we already touched on while reviewing the did dog integration, uh, we would like to we would like to implement uh, a did exchange protocol. So we could actually integrate the new did dog trade and make it all in nice and W3C compliant and everything. Uh, and also, obviously, since we are going to be building this, we want to do it the right way, as we as we previously discussed and uh, agreed on some uh, guide, like state machine implementation guidelines. Uh, it should be without I/O, and it should follow some like rules to make sure that it's like well testable and and uh, provides nice APIs. Um, so yeah, this will be like uh, work for like upcoming I don't know, week or uh, week or two, maybe more. I think. I mean, uh, implementing new protocol that can be a lot of work, um, especially with a new new approach. And yeah, just uh, going on the next section. Uh, well, let me, let me stop by here for a second. Um, Anything else uh, you guys think that uh, should be uh, like put here, maybe in relation also with this stuff? I guess, I guess this could be actually the right time to discuss some of these points. Uh, you know, the priority of of the message handling issue, the CLI, the AATH. What do you think, George? Um, yeah, yeah, sure. If, if you don't mind, I can um, give an update on some of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so my my question around the um Aries agent test harness came up after I was playing with um VCX version 0 0.55 against Akapai version 0 0.8.1, um, which is I think the the latest stable version of Akapai. Um and yeah, I, I just sort of found a couple small bugs with um message related handling things mm. um and i was thinking that's the kind of thing that um aath would pick up on um and so yeah i guess i was wondering if you could share some information around what aries vcx's approach to aath is and, and what that means and what's really tested by it right right uh okay yeah sure i i i uh we can do that uh i'm, I'm just thinking about the ordering here and where to fit this in i think there's actually not really a need for discussion for this one it's kind of stays as is in conjunction with the upcoming work and yeah we can just kind of hop in here for the ATH point now. So yeah, back to your question. Um yeah we we have uh the ATH suits we have uh we have the how do you call it back channel implemented on top of Aries VCX agent um the Rust agent and mm -hmm. it's running against Akapai and AFJ in the uh, Akapai, AFJ, and itself, uh, in like pretty much all of the combinations. Uh, not all, I think there are some suits which are uh, disabled for uh, for uh, some reasons. Um, and uh, I think some features are just not implemented, or in some cases maybe the counterparty was not fully implemented, or so, there was some some something like that. But uh, I think the main uh, 
perhaps the reason why this was not catched uh this is a message handling issue created uh those credential offer right uh I'm, I'm thinking that we actually haven't updated our haven't synced up aath with uh the main version for a while now and i'm not uh, sure what the version is running i think it was before the messages update and we didn't update uh, aath uh, since then so uh that would be definitely something that we should put on actually our, our backlog and it's quite high priority i would say Mero, i see you're muted you want to yeah, it was last updated before we implemented the new connection so about i think four four five months ago uh, <clears throat> it's using quite prehistoric version yeah we should we should update it yeah i i don't know george if, if you have a, this is actually like the part of a project like um we always struggle to keep up a little bit. Um, it's 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 cumbersome to set up. I know. Mm. So I mean, but it is important. So we'll we'll do it. But uh, just wanted to say, if, if you would, if you would have like capacity to try to, you know, uh, kind of get into this this ATH profiles and maybe make some contribution there, like that would be like su super super appreciated because we are. Yeah, as, as you see, four, month, four, four months late, we are kind of struggling to keep up with these updates. I, I guess it's not uh, not always, it's not necessarily difficult. Like once you kind of ha have the infra and knowledge how to set it up. But uh, from our team, Miro is kind of expert on, on this one. It's all of HTA testing was pretty much done by, mostly by Miro. Um, so so yeah we'll, we'll we'll have to put this on on the on a on a on a backlog and i'm actually gonna put it here uh, yeah yeah no worries i can i can try learn a bit about it um i i have no idea how it works really <laughs> but i like the idea of it you know um mm -hmm. I, I guess if we get it working smoothly and and frequently what do you think the right interval for running it would be do you, do you think it may be oh so this is actually sorted out by the guys who develop ath they are running it i don't know every day uh or like really really frequently so you get feedback all the time whenever you know somebody increments their version of the framework or we upgrade technically we can have like you know really immediate results with everyone or all, all our supported pairs it's just a matter of really like uh, updating the the back channel to use the you know newer newer version and then seeing how mm. it plays out and get, you know probably addressing any any issues that uh, arise ar you know arise from there. Mm. Okay, cool, cool, cool. And the the back channel points at the VCX agent crate, right? So. Yeah, yeah, so it's like uh, Aries VC. Uh, let me open up the repo. But basically, the way it's like layered is like there's a Aries VCX, right? Then on top of Aries VCX, there's the Aries VCX agent, uh, which uh, handles persistence and uh, just kind of, yeah, like the, the instantiation of the library. Uh, creates kind of like these service abstractions and it's all using profiles and then on top of this project uh, on top of the Aries V6 agent uh, there's the harness and that's directly underneath the AATH so if I go to uh, at, uh, Aries uh, we have a back channel here, Aries back channels, and there's Aries VCX. And yeah, and this is like a layer on top of the agent. So this kind of is adding uh, all the specifics endpoints, you know, the HTTP endpoints, which must be implemented for the AATH. Maybe wow, cool. 
Yeah. Awesome. M Mira, Mira will be uh, way more knowledgeable about like how this works and what kind of tests there are in like uh, in the in the suit and what we are supporting and what not. Mm. And also, I think uh, uh, like if you try to set it up, I think Mira will be like uh, able to perhaps unblock you if you run into some issues because. I'm really not well versed in this uh, yet, but uh, Mira was, you know, doing lots of lots of work here. Mm. Okay, awesome. Thanks, thanks for the info. Yeah. Um. All right, so we should update. I mean, uh, at least to update version, I think in sync up the code changes, it shouldn't be uh, that much effort uh, to get it compiled. A question is, yeah, if we run into some, like if we like get the drop in in uh, in our test suits, a number of passing test suits, um, maybe we'll have to address some issues, but uh, uh, that's what should be done either way. And then we can avoid running into like stuff like this, which you, which you discovered the hard way. Hmm. Yeah, there, there was another one um, I discovered as well, where during connection protocol, uh, if you're the invitee and you send Akapai a request payload um, using the new connection type state pattern, um, the the did doc that you attach in your request um, has a public key controller field that's just an empty string. Um, and then that empty string uh, causes some validation on Akapai's end to fail. And mm. then it ignores your message. So you can't form a connection with Akapai. Oh, okay. And yeah, I, I think I sent a message about that, wondering if you guys had experienced that. Um, but if you are unaware of that, then I'll make an issue for it. Um, yeah, I think, pretty simple I think it would thing. be good. Yeah. Yeah. Make issue, please. So we track it. Uh, yeah, and then uh, uh, then we have like uh, two more point. Well, one more point, I guess, message handling and the CLI. Um, yeah. yeah, so the CLI, you also created issues for that, right? Kind of like idea for a project. Mm -hmm. uh, a CLI demo. Maybe you can uh, for all the other listeners who you know didn't uh, read through it and uh, are either listening on YouTube or listening here. You can kind of conclude the idea and and um, also if you had re if you had a chance to react to my like suggestions here. Yes, yeah, I've had a read of that. Um, yeah, yeah. So essentially, this issue is just um, proposing the idea that we make some uh, CLI. Uh, application which demonstrates how Aries VCX is meant to be used in the holder issuer uh, prover verifier roles, um, and and so I guess this pattern of creating a Alice and Faber demo um, is a somewhat common pattern in the Aries ecosystem. Um, so Akapai has one where you're, you're running two Akapai instances, I believe, where one is Alice and the other is Faber. Uh, and they're talking to each other. Uh, AFJ or, or Checked has, has an example as well of how two agents can talk to each other. Um, and I, I think as well uh, in Aries VCX, in the Java wrapper, there is actually a demo um, of two Java applications, uh, Alice and, and Faber, who basically drive the CLI to talk to each other. Um, but I, I think that example is a bit old now. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> were, you, were you aware of that? Uh, I wasn't aware that there is a demo for Java, but there is a, there's a demo for Node.js, uh, which we kind of maintain still. Mm -hmm. It's even part of uh, CI to run the demo. Uh, and, and also we actually have like a CLI you know, built with Node.js, 
but um, yeah, I would much much more prefer like a Rust based, a Rust based uh, CLI and demo because like um, consuming Aries VCX through Node.js is like a rather like specific way of using it. And uh, there's, um, I think, yeah, have, having it native would be definitely easier to maintain and also keep the quality high. Yeah, yeah. So um, when I first found out about Aries VCX, um, I think that Java demo was one of the first things I found somehow. Um, and just seeing those two files and and seeing what APIs are meant to get called in what order. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it is really helpful for new consumers to know what they're meant to be calling on, um, even if it's just a, a really simple application. Um, and yeah, that that Java application, it's just, you know, printing out some lines saying, here's what's happening. Um, and, you know, sometimes it'll take in a standard input for when you have to paste an invitation, for example, and things like that. But it, it'll super simple um so yeah i guess i was proposing um if if we should make some demo like that of two different cli applications is the most common pattern i've seen um so yeah two different cli applications that talk to each other uh and their implementation is just simply using the aries vcx crate directly um rather than any wrappers Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So the, we 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 what was it? Uh, oh yeah. We kind of started basically this work. So what do you think about my suggestion? So to summarize, maybe my points, basically is that uh, we we kind of had a CLI and we just didn't drive it to completion, and then uh, we somewhat like gave up on it. Like we'll finish this later. Uh, we'll do this later. Let's let let's not add kind of like additional maintenance burden right now um but uh, yeah i mean for this kind of, but at the same time like i i imagine as you said from your own experience like having like at least faber kind of demo like uh which is easy to run it it really can make people much more like it make it much easier to understand like what's going on but but so if we are gonna do it in rust and it's gonna be like CLI based uh, that you have to like copy paste those invitation. I kind of do a little bit of manual interaction to really actually understand what's going on. Then, uh, then we should have like good CLIs, CLI baseline. So that makes me think we should actually like uh, reopen the six nine two and and make it like our yeah, baseline for the Ellie's favor demo. And then at the Ellie's in favor, I believe they should essentially be running the same executable, maybe just with like, I don't know, different like some different configuration or something. But, uh, um, but uh, I mean, after all, it just agents, right? It just agents talking to each other, one issuing credential to the other. So, try kind of try to maybe create some sort of Alice Faber scripts or mm -hmm. executables on top of that, like a shared CL general, like general uh, every CLI. And also, I mean, it will be great not only for onboarding, but also I think for testing uh, kind of like maybe like uh, like manual testing or testing some specific edge cases which you, you don't want to necessarily script right but you want to use Aries like uh, like uh, one party in the conversation and try some like custom workflows then having a CLI could be valuable there um yeah yeah um, I do have an alternative opinion so let me know what you think but um yeah i i think if we were to build it on top of the cli cli work that was getting done um i do sort of worry about the complexity of it um i guess i was sort of imagining 
you know, two files, alice.rs, uh, faber.rs, to keep it simple, um, hmm. where it's all in one file and you can see exactly what Aries VCX uh, APIs are being called hmm. rather than having to drill down into some CLI uh, implementation. Uh, I think mm. that CLI implementation seems more like a a full fledged project of its of its own, uh, oh. with potential like production value, mm. um, and and same same case for using the Aries VCX agent code. Um, I think that would sort of hide away uh, the, the Aries VCX calls that we're trying to show off to consumers. Mm. Um, we're not, I guess I'm imagining the demo is trying to show off Aries VCX directly rather than show off the Aries VCX CLI tool and the Aries mm. VCX agent tools that we've made. Right. If you get what I mean. Yeah, I, I get it. And I think it uh, actually convinced me really easily. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, I, I, and it will be also a lot less effort. Like, yeah, okay, two files, and uh, it wouldn't be like uh, maybe I guess as general as uh, like I envision. But yeah, I mean, it would definitely make better job at demonstrating the code usage. Uh, code usage. It will be. I probably. I feel like it will be. Mm. it would be a lot very similar to the like in end-to-end -end test slash integration tests we have but yeah, it, it will be different in a sense that it will be split in two files you kind of have to run them both it might be a little bit interactive if we ask the user to copy paste like invitation from one window to another yeah, I can imagine that. Yeah, and it will be, it will be, I guess for this kind of demo, like if we were to build this Alice Faber demo on top of CLI, then it would make sense to like invest lots of effort into like making the CLI actually good and make sure that it's like kind of yeah production great quality. Then we don't have to refactor it out later again. Mm -hmm. But uh, this kind of demo is. Um, you can kind of just glue it up together and it's two files you just update to get it get it compile it doesn't have to be beautiful code but it should be like this kind of explanatory code i guess yeah yeah i think i think that's my opinion of it as well it in okay. my opinion it should just be something where it's two small files or so where all of the the fat of you know testing setups and and everything else is is cut out and it's just pretty much only Aries VCX API calls directly, you know, mm. straight onto the handler type state paths and whatnot. Right. Um and then that could be maybe referenced from the Aries VCX readme as a as an example um, of how to use it. Mm -hmm. I think it could be like uh well depending on the urgency uh although I, I i feel like it's not urgent it could be actually like good first issue maybe for someone to implement it it will be challenging issue but it will be extremely educative for whoever would pick it up because they would mm. actually have to use all of the apis pretty much and initialize the library and and kind of go through the entire workflow but mm. uh I don't know. We can maybe keep it keep it open for a while. At the same time, I feel like it'll be the way like you described it, and I would pretty much like now agree to not make it too robust. Uh, it shouldn't be too big effort to get it implemented for like somebody for somebody who's familiar with Aries VCX, I guess. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think you know maybe even that um, Java demo. Or, or even the the node demo, which which I haven't seen, could be used as a reference how to implement mm. this one. Mm -hmm. And any other opinions from the from the participants or thoughts? No, I agree. If it's if the goal is to show off Aris VCX, the usage of Aris VCX, and just uh, simple like 
um, simple demo would show, but if the goal is to basically test any any uh, scenario, any agent behavior, then more generic CLI would be useful. So mm. depends what, what the goal is, but uh, I think it's entirely valid goal to, <clears throat> to, sh to, um, to show off very CCX. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had originally when when I was reading the issue, basically I was thinking like uh, like oh, if somebody wants to like uh, see the understand the code usage, they can take a look at tests. But uh, yeah, I, I see that. I see I, now. I see the value of like having Alice and Faber and running in and files. It's kind of a uh, kind of more uh, gives more satisfaction to see it running as a scenario and you ran the scripts rather than just running cargo test and you have like a bunch of okay 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 uh like a test passing mm, yeah 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 so yeah let, let's do it uh let's create the issue we can make it a good first issue give it a few days if nobody picks it up then we can just implement it oh well, yeah I, I can update that ticket to make it more clear what the intention is um around what we just talked about so i'll put it here uh alice and favor cli demo demo demonstration and yeah okay this is checked we mentioned we covered uh i think that's it um for our agenda uh, before we like sign off completely as uh, Adam in the left, uh, I, uh, we have, uh, I, see, I see we have uh, Agnes and uh, Mysterious and an anonymous adult uh, participant on the call. Uh, if you would like to feel free to like introduce yourself, if you would like to stay kind of anonymous and like just, uh, just be audience, that's fine too. So if you would like to uh, introduce yourself, uh, you can go ahead now. If not, that's all right too. All right, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Agnes. Um, I just joined the mentorship uh, program. I have no idea what's going on in the call, but <laughs> uh, uh, Barbara asked us to just join some different project calls and try to figure out what the documentation needs might be. So Sorry, my internet connection is a bit weak today. Uh, so Barbara asked us to just find out what the different projects might need in terms of documentation. Uh, so I chose Iris because I'm more conversant with Python. Uh, so yeah, so I, I, we're still just checking out the projects so that we go back and check what projects we may be working with. I'm from Nairobi, Kenya. Yeah. Uh, okay. And what what uh, what project are you uh, uh, mentee for? Um, I'm in TN that documentation. We haven't chosen the projects yet. That's what we are supposed to do this week. Uh, a a is it the AATH? Uh, we haven't chosen the projects yet. We are ah, just okay. generally doing documentation. Yeah, right. we haven't been assigned the projects yet. So ah. we were asked to go and find just different projects and figure out what you might be interested in. Uh -huh. Okay, I see. I see. If you would like to like connect and like uh, you know, uh, if you have any questions, inquiries about our Aries VCX Rust implementation, then uh, we have a we have a Discord channel. So feel free to drop a question or, or reach out uh, via direct message on Discord as well. All right. Thank you. All right. Well, uh, I guess uh, that uh, that concludes uh, that concludes it. And uh, this was uh, we almost use entire 
time. George, do you have any, George or Mira, do yeah. you guys have any final remarks or points you would like to? Yeah, sorry, I just have um, one question about uh, that a non creds priority. Um, so if there, if there is a tool provided that helps people migrate from VDR tools to the CredX uh, wallet data, the non-creds wallet data, um, do you think we're then going to need more migration for CredX to the a non-creds RS implementation, if you know what I mean? Yeah, um, I, um, I'm not sure. Um... I, I don't know how different what kind of differences and challenges that that transition is gonna bring. So I guess it's uh, kind of hard to tell, but I imagine that there might be some sort of migration too. I, I'm not sure though. Hmm. Right, but um, I guess an alternative option would be if we move to a non-creds RS. Uh, before the migration scripts are written so then there's only one migration needed which would be vdr tools to a non-creds rs um, yeah but... technically that's yeah that's also option actually so we have a bogdan off uh, right now and he was he started working on a migration tool i don't think he get you go he go down into like specifics so probably the the work you've done would be still like reusable it's pretty, uh, it looked pretty like generic, but yeah, um, I would like to actually do like some further testing, uh, like from our side on the, uh, on the CredX implementation. Uh, that's why I'm doing all the stuff around the profiles and trying to integrate the module lips profile into uh, the VCX and VCX not PRS. Uh, and then once we have that like working and confirmed, then actually, yeah, it would it would make sense if we actually like postpone the migration scripts and uh, just uh, just finalize the the VDR tools to unknown creds kind of migration first, and that would be the only one, right? Mm. Yeah, yeah, just something to think about. Yeah, I'm sure. Bogdan has thought about this and has opinions on it as well. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely put it here as a as a note. So uh, consideration um, prioritizing uh, try try. It's difficult to uh, write when uh, like being what <laughs> publicly yeah. on the call. I feel nervous. Cannot type even the basic words now. Uh, prioritization. <laughs> oh, that's it's wrong, is it? Um, prioritize um uh, uh migration integration all on um, threads RS prior to credx migration all right we'll we'll think about this but i think it would make sense actually yeah why why to make ourselves uh, extra work with two migrations when if we can only do if we only can uh, find a way to only do one mm. right okay guys Anything else? Well, it was exactly one hour and and I think uh, there's nothing else. Um, so thank you all for uh, joining in here. Um, we have the Aries GCX channel. You can reach out, re reach us out there as well. Um, thank you for for being here and have a great week. Cool, you too. Thanks guys. Bye. Cheers, bye.